if you're like me, you probably bought one of these recently, and with it, you got one of these, which is a wiring loom for a eight pin CDI. And then you probably notice that the wires on here, different colors, there's a few missing, that sort of thing. So then you went to uh, the internet and you came across this wiring diagram. And then you probably search a little bit more and came across this one, which is in all Chinese. So today, uh, because I need to wire mine up and uh, I'm trying to help everyone else out, I'm going to teach you how to use this, which I made myself. So what we'll do is we'll start off by identifying the pins on the eight pin plug uh, for the CDI, which is a, a dis, a capacitive discharge ignition system. Um, so this is a traditional eight pin uh, system. So let's have a look at the plug. Okay, there's nothing really special about the plug itself. It's a pretty standard uh, eight pin eight pin plug here, but. You'll see on a lot of these uh, Chinese stu uh, things like plugs and devices and stuff like that, that the wiring color is a little bit different from one to the next. So what we're gonna do is partially ignore the wire colors. So put that sort of uh, out of your mind. And what we'll focus on is the pins. So when you are using uh, like automotive OEM uh, wiring diagrams, they'll always identify the pins uh, and not necessarily the colors because it's a lot more reliable way to um, determine what the function of the device is in our case is the CDI the ignition box so what we're going to do we'll start here at pin number one and then work our way through to pin number four and then on the bottom side four five six and seven Okay, so what I'm going to do first is slice this harness open because as you can see, there's uh, only seven pins here and there's, there's quite a few wires coming out here. So in order to determine uh, this diagram here, we have to figure out what each one of these wires is doing in correspondence with, with the plug. Now what you'll find is that some wires are doubled up together and some are joined together. So we'll just figure that out first. All right, so what I like to do with wiring looms is just kind of sp spread them out to figure out like what's actually branching where. <clears throat> so the first thing you'll notice is that this guy here, pin six, is the green one, and it actually branches out in three places. See, one here, one here, one here. Now these are to do with uh, various functions uh, of the CDI that need to be going to ground. Uh, so now we know why there are more wires at the end here than there are on this end here. So we can kind of uh, come to the conclusion that uh, it's not as really complicated as you'd really think at the start because now we can see it uh, and see exactly what's going on because it's not just a bundle of spaghetti. So what we'll do is we'll start at one, which is the, the first pin on looking at the back of the plug. And number one, in this instance, is red and black. Now in the original wiring diagrams, it's marked as black red. So you can imagine that it can be confusing. But the function of number one is ignition input. We'll skip two because there's no connection on number two. We'll go to three. Now three is ignition input as well. Now both of these go from here all the way to the stator. Now this is what the stator looks like on the engine.
which is why you can see that I've represented it kind of like this, uh, so that it looks like what you're actually looking at uh, when you're in front of the motor. All right, so if you move to pin four, which is on the, on the top row, the furthest to the right, pin four here is a position. So on the side of the stator, there will be a small uh, magnet and it has a positive and a negative because these are joined inside the CDI that it uses for the position. Now this will tell the CDI when to activate the coil basically and do the spark thing. So pin four is your position plus, which is just on here uh, on the motor. So this is where you need to connect to. So if we go to pin five, which is this pin here, on the bottom row, first one on the left on the bottom row, number five is the coil plus. So that is going from here all the way down to the coil. Now this is the, uh, the main power connection to the coil. Now the other side of the coil is grounded. You can see here represented by the wire that goes down. You can see that they're joined here because this is actually the green wire from the harness, which is why it's joined together inside the harness. So if we go to pin six, which is the second from the left on the bottom row, this is the green wire and this is the ground for the CDI but the reason it's joined is it's also used as a common ground for some of the devices and the signals and uh, the shutoff and things like that. So when you make your loom or if you're using this one, you just bundle them together because they all are going to the same place. Then you only need to provide one connection to the chassis or the ground or the motor or wherever you're sort of putting it to. So pin seven, which is the third one along on the bottom row is the position negative. So this is what you call the ground reference for the position trigger. And so it goes to the bottom side of, of the trigger. This is the connection at the motor. So we can see here going from seven all the way to the position trigger there. Now number eight, is black and white and this is something that uh, pretty much all of these motors have which is the cutout so what happens with this is that there's a switch on the handlebars or anywhere you like to put it really there's a momentary switch that connects uh, this pin of the cdi to ground and what that tells the cdi is that i don't want to run anymore and this is how we we turn it off we interrupt the signal and we we tell the CDI that we want it to stop. So eight uh, on there is a cutout switch. Now the way this works is that you'll go from this pin here down to here and this symbol represents the switch which will be on your handlebars or wherever you like to put it. And then the other side of the switch will go straight to the ground. Now it, you can join it up to this in your wiring loom if you make your own wiring loom or you can just send it to ground it's um it's totally up to you now on the gpx itself we have a couple of extra things so on the gpx we have a neutral light switch which is this symbol here but this is what it actually looks like now what happens is that switch connects um, a wire to the earth through the motor. So what we do is we hook up to our battery positive, to our neutral light, which will indicate that we're not in gear. And then that goes to this wire on the motor. And then when you're in neutral internally of the motor, it'll select uh, a connection to ground and then the light will work because electricity is now passing through to the ground. 
if you're hooking up a voltage rectifier, you want to firstly get a voltage rectifier, and my wiring here is for a 4-pin, uh, because that's what I'll be using on, on my specific um, adaptation. So what you want to do is get these two wires here from the bottom of the stator, which will both be yellow, so don't get confused because they're both um, collecting an AC wave, so there's alternating current wave like your house electricity. So what happens is these two go into the voltage rectifier and some sort of magic occurs. And because it's connected to ground, it will convert the AC power in here to DC power and then connected to our battery, it will charge our battery and operate our lighting circuit and all those sort of things. All right, so if you follow all those steps, uh, one by one, do one wire at a time, I'm sure you won't have any problems putting your project together and getting it running. Uh, if anyone wants the original uh, file of that wiring diagram that I made for myself, that has all the, all the wiring colors and the functions on it, feel free to drop a message down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, I can email you the, the diagram. Uh, I'm just here to, to try and help other people out. And if I can manage to help out one other person uh, get their project running, then it makes it all worthwhile for me. Um, so, but for now, I'm gonna crank this thing up and go for a ride. Thank you.